Are you ready to decorate for fall? Me too. So stick around and let's make some fall wreaths together today. So for all the projects today, we're gonna to be using this paper pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. It is by Paper Studio, and so it did happen to be on sale this week. I know they go through a cycle where it's like every other week, so you can wait maybe a week or so, check it out, and then you can get it for half off as well. So I just picked out about eight different sheets of paper, and these first set of cones that we're gonna make, I'm going to cut into six by six squares. You get four squares out of each piece of paper. They look kind of small at first. I was like, hmm, <laughs> but um, actually they work out just fine. So then I'm using some foam board from the Dollar Tree and I'm just creating a circle. Mine ends up being more of an oval really. It's not quite a full circle shape, but if you, it doesn't really matter. No one's gonna see the underneath side of it. If you're worried about it being a perfect circle, you could always trace something, but then you're gonna draw a circle inside as well. So once I got those all cut out and I took the scrapbook paper that I had cut out and all I did was roll it into a cone shape. I'm using hot glue here and I'm just gluing down the bottom of the cone and then I'm going to glue the bottom um, edges together. So there's going to be some spaces up towards the top but we want the bottom part where the coney type shape is to be flush together down there. So we're just going to follow that line of the circle and we're going to go all around the foam piece. So I'm just showing you like you can see here that there is some big spaces in between. The thing that I kind of got my inspiration from online, it um, said that they just glued smaller pieces on top of those. I didn't really like that. So what I did was once I got the full cone circle glued on, I just went back in with some hot glue and some more of this sized cone sh shapes. And I just filled them in through all the spaces that were showing. So then when I'm all done, I won't have any space here. I used about, I would say 19 to 20 cone shapes and my circle was about 14 inches um, in diameter. So you could go a smaller size here if you want. So here I'm just showing you how I rolled it up. The tighter you roll it, the more of a cone shape you get. And again, I just used hot glue and I only glued the tail of the paper on to the rest of the paper. I didn't put any other kind of adhesive there. So these are four by six pieces of paper that I rolled into the cone shape as well. And then I'm just gluing those on top of the other cones. So we have uh, more dimension here and I went about every two cones, I glued another cone on top. Now I'm taking this pumpkin that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and I'm using some folk art chalk paint and I'll list down in the description box which paints I used and I'll have a link to Amazon if you can get them there. But I'm using kind of non-traditional colors here just because my scrapbook paper had some more blues and greens in it so I thought it would be fun to make my pumpkin a blue and green color as well. So I have the green color kind of on the underneath side and then the blue as the cutout pops here in this piece of wood. So this, like I said, did come from the Dollar Tree. I think this is a really nice wood piece. Um, they have really some great pieces out this fall at the Dollar Tree as far as like decorating goes. Some really fun fall and Halloween pieces. So make sure you go check that out. So this ribbon also came from the Dollar Tree. Um, it's one of my favorite patterns that they bring out every year. I just do a crisscross and then I fold and then I'm gonna take some twine and I'm going to wrap it around the middle of the bow and then I tie it in a knot. So it gives it a really tight look and you get a really fun bow shape and it's not really difficult to make. You can hot glue the middle as well um, the only thing about hot gluing it down in the middle is then you really need to put something over the top of it because it's pretty noticeable when you use the hot glue as opposed to the twine because once we tie it really tight here in the middle um, it really doesn't need anything to sit on top of it unless you want there to be something on top of it and for this bow I didn't glue anything into the center of it so I'm gonna cut off the twine. I do go ahead and dovetail my ends and then I'm going to use 
my hot glue to glue it on to the top of the pumpkin. So my scissors were getting kind of dull and I didn't realize that when I dovetailed them. So it's a little bit of a rustic dovetail if that's even a thing, but um, I just went ahead and went with it. So I just glue that bow to the top and then we're gonna take this pumpkin wood cutout and we're gonna glue it to the top of our cone. So where our cone wreath had the hole in the middle, we are gonna take this pumpkin and just using hot glue, we're going to sit it. You don't have to smash it because remember this is paper. So you're just going to sit it kind of gently onto the paper and press down. Now there, these cones are a really tight hold on this uh, foam board. So you should have a really good hold. I do go ahead and put a piece of twine on the back and then this project is complete. I wanna do it all. With you by my side, if you're in, meet me here tonight. Be brave and come along, I'll be alright. Promise we don't need no brake lights. We can travel the world, so just say. So I've never made a paper wreath before. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever made a paper wreath. I want to try rosettes next time. Um, I saw some really cool ideas online that had some rosette wreaths and I'd never seen something like that before. So I want to try that maybe in a future video. Let me know if you're loving the idea of paper and wreaths or just paper projects in general. And I'll see if I can come up with some more of those. Let me know down in the comments maybe what you would like to see using scrapbook paper. If you're loving the projects today, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps my video be seen by other people. And let's get back to the other projects. This is a really simple technique. All I'm doing is taking ribbon and wrapping it around the wreath form. This is a 12 inch wreath form from the Dollar Tree. And this is also Dollar Tree ribbon. So this took me about a roll and a half of ribbon to cover this whole metal wreath wreath frame. I'm also going to take a foam green wreath form from the Dollar Tree. That is a mouthful. And I'm going to cover it with this brown and um, orange plaid ribbon and do the same technique. And then I just glued one on top of the other. So then I took some picks from the Dollar Tree. I cut them all apart and I'm using some twine and I'm just going to tie them into a bundle. That way I don't have the bottom stems to worry about when I glue it onto my wreath and then I get a full bundle but without all the excess stuff. So then I'm just going to place it where I want it to be and then I'm just going to put a generous amount of hot glue on the back and then I'm going to press firmly onto the wreath. So it did have to hold it here for a little bit just to make sure that it was stuck on there. So then I took these uh, leaf and acorn cutouts that they have at the Dollar Tree. They are like a garland that you can do or make ornaments out of them. And I'm just going to cover them with some scrapbook paper from my scrapbook pack. All I did was trace around and glue it on top. And then I'm going to make another simple bow. This is another ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I do fold it in half and then I uh, accordion it together. And then again, using my twine, I'm just going to wrap it around the middle so that I have something to hold on to. And then I just tie it in a really tight knot. Once I get it all tied up like that, I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and dovetail the ends. And then I glue it onto the top of the bundle. And then I'm going to take the little cutouts that I covered with the scrapbook paper and I'm going to glue them underneath this ribbon. I decided that some of the glue was showing from where I glued both of the wreath forms together. So I took some nautical rope and I'm just going to wrap it around where the two wreath forms come together and then this project is complete. So this is a wreath upcycle. I used to have this wreath hanging in my classroom when I taught elementary, but I don't teach elementary anymore. And so I don't have an apple theme. So I decided to just remove all the apples, but keep the raffia and ribbon at the top. So I'm using these Dollar Tree pumpkins. These are amazing. If you can find them in your store, I highly recommend picking them up. I wish I could have found more, but I wasn't lucky enough to. So I'm using my same folk art chalk paint. And I'm just gonna cover both of the pumpkins with the chalk paint. 
So as you see, normally you would trace on the outside, but if I were to flip this pumpkin over, there's a lip there. And when I traced it, I wouldn't have the exact shape that I was looking for. So instead, I just decided to put it on top and trace it out. You're going to have a good lip on the paper when you glue it on, because like I said, there is like a space between there, but that's okay because we're going to use our sanding block and sand it off. So I'm just using a regular Elmer's glue stick. I find that it sticks on the scrapbook paper just fine to wood and then you don't have all of the wrinkles from Mod Podge. So um, I just go ahead and make sure that I cover the entire piece with my glue stick. And because I'm a teacher and kind of a glue snob, I only use the Elmer's glue brand. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and glue the piece of paper on and make sure that it's totally dry before I start sanding. So make sure you can see my paper was kind of moving there. So just make sure you're, move, you're pulling your sanding block towards you and not away from you. So I'm going to do this, all this sanding around the side where there is a, again, a lip, but there's like an edge there. You can see as I'm sanding that you can see part of the edge. You want to sand that really good. And once you get, um, you can start to see like it's coming apart you can just pick up the paper and peel it off and that's what I love the most about using the sanding technique especially if there's a lip you can just peel off the paper and keep going it gives you a really smooth edge so I'm going to do that for both pumpkins then I'm going to take some raffia this also came from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to tie a little shoelace bow and I'm going to glue some raffia to the top of both of these pumpkins I think these turned out so adorable. Let me know down in the comments if you're into traditional colors or do you like kind of non-traditional fall colors. I'll put a video up above here from last year that I did some pumpkins that were non-traditional colors. I'm into blue so that's what I always tend to pick but you can check out the ceramic pumpkins I painted last year right here. So here we are, we're gluing our raffia on and this is just simple, nothing fancy. You could add buttons here if you wanted or any other kind of picks here onto it. I wanted the scrapbook paper to be the star of the show so that's why that I just used raffia. So the last step to this is just to glue it to the grapevine wreath and then this project is complete. There's so many new fall fun colors out this year as well as like new supplies over at Dollar Tree and I'm just super excited to get to start using those and to make some really fun fall decor. So I had a lot of fun using this Hobby Lobby scrapbook paper pack that I picked up. Um, they were on sale last week so just wait for Paper Studio to go on sale again and you can get it half off. If you're wanting some more fall inspiration, check out here at the end screen. I have a playlist from last year's fall and I also have a video here that you can click on that uses some Dollar Tree items to make a fall decor. That turned out really cute so check it out right here. As always wherever you are in your journey is a perfect place to start and I will see you in my next video.